Hey everybody, I'm Josh. And I'm Rachel. And tonight we are trying out probably the best restaurant, at least I'm hoping so, yeah. in Las Vegas. Joel Robichon, winner of most Michelin stars in the world before he passed away. Yeah. Um, this is gonna be a big one. This is gonna be a big one. Tasty menu coming up. That's right, let's go. All right, back in the room time. Um, I can tell you, we decided not to record in the dining room. Unlike most of our videos, if you haven't seen those before, a lot of times we were doing it up front as mm -hmm. we're doing first bites. And right away, it felt different. Um, I was a little nervous because the restaurant was very quiet. And small. It's very intimate. I yeah. shouldn't say like small in a bad way, but it's very intimate. Yeah. Oh, I mean the ceilings are like triple of any any restaurant you yeah. typically are in, but it's like 13 tables basically in the main dining room, mm -hmm. um, and it just didn't it didn't seem like it would be appropriate for us to be able to do that. And I think Rachel put it best when she said, "I don't think it would do the food justice mm -hmm. to do the way we do where." We do a first bite initial reaction, and then we do it afterwards and say what the rest of it was. Yeah, in reality, I could tell in two minutes of sitting down that this meal deserved our undivided attention. We did get a bottle of wine at dinner. Uh, we ended up doing a Riesling, um, which is what we like. We did talk about if we were going to do it again, we'd probably just get a a bottle of Chardonnay or something like that. Yeah. Something a little bit less sweet uh, that is not gonna be crazy off-putting, but mm -hmm. we weren't gonna do the $200 wine pairing because- $200 we, per person. $200 okay. per person. <laughs> but we already did do the big old menu. We did. Which they give you a copy of. Thank goodness, because you'll never remember it. Yes. Not many places will give you a copy of their menu, but this one did and needed to. Yeah. Holy God. All right, before we get into that. Oh, that's a good place to start, okay. Yeah. I was gonna go through pictures. <laughs> before we get into that, uh, the bread cart. Oh my God. <laughs> it's such a beautiful thing. I forgot to take more pictures of it afterwards, but I did record some of it. Should be over it right now. But we uh, weren't really sure what to do. So the guy brought us nine different breads in our initial bread basket. Yeah, he says, have you been here before? And we said, no. And he's like, oh, and he goes through each of the breads and then he says, do you want me to just bring you an assortment? Yes. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> we sure do. When in doubt, say yes to them. <laughs> the best part about that, you don't end your bread. Like it's not just, you don't get like one thing. They keep coming back right. and giving you more bread. <laughs> yeah, so by the end of the night, I think we both had a minimum of 10 to 12 different types of bread. And it's, this is the gluttonous portion. This is like sure. the gluttonous meal. <laughs> uh, to go with the bread, there also is probably the most perfect butter you could ever ask for. Oh Imported gosh. from France, somewhere in beautiful region. Yeah. And they also um, provide you some olive oil that was Chef Robichon's favorite olive oil when he was alive. I mean, there's just every single little mini touch that right. makes this. The olive oil was very good. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm a butter guy. He is. He I loves mean, butter. If you, if you ever looked at me, you don't question that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, give me the butter. I thought that was the best. Uh, favorite pieces of bread I thought was the bacon which are those kind of little diamond, beautiful, perfect pieces, mm -hmm. and the cheddar. The smokiness in that Ooh. dime, or in those bacon bread was just, it just set it apart. It was so mm -hmm. good, and all the textures are different. Yeah. Crazy. Um, the cheddar, though, was my personal favorite, I would say. I think the cheddar was my personal favorite as well, with the croissant being my second favorite. Sure, the croissant, I remember, like, you just, it's a one bite croissant, and as it's just like collapsing in your mouth, you can yeah. feel the different flavors coming apart. It like, was. It was nuts. It was nuts. <laughs> and, uh -huh. the, and the cheddar bread, I thought it was like such a super strong cheddar. Beautiful. 
Yeah. Amazing. And back to the bacon one, there's a couple notes on it. it the smokiness, it just envelops the perfectly crisp bread. Mm -hmm. it, and I'm with Josh, there were nine different types of bread at least that we tried with nine different textures and flavors and that was just the start right. of where we go next. Oh, and also the room is immaculate. It is immaculate. Mm -hmm. Freaking amazing. I I can't put it's into beautiful. words. It really but transports pictures you. should hopefully show you. Yeah, and it really does take you away and you can be yeah. in any city in the world. Yeah, like, our waiter it was beautiful. That's what our waiter said was <laughs> like you could really be anywhere in the world um, as long as you don't look out that door. Yep. Which we couldn't see it because we were in the corner. Um, but as long as you don't see the casino floor, you have no idea. Yeah, no idea. Um, you are literally moved. All right, let's start. First this was, 10. yeah, I think it was 10 courses. Le Caviar Imperial. Ocetra caviar served atop of lobster in a crustacean gelée dotted with cauliflower puree. It was as fancy as it sounds. Yeah, and it comes out and it just is delicate and perfect. And you know that <laughs> they took time doing it. And it looks like jello. Right. It looks like jello. <laughs> and and they call it a jello. So yeah. you're like, oh my God, this is going to be kind of weird and gross. But like, Rachel really put it best that it ate like a cold soup. Because while you peel away like like a jello the moment it hits your mouth oh it's not it's it truly is like a chilled soup yeah it was like, delicious uh, and then the shaved i think it was shaved lobster is the mm -hmm. way that they described it it's like the most thin perfect bite it's crazy that it's crazy when caviar gets to be like the biggest um texture, texture piece element. Mm -hmm. but our first two dishes to caviar was the big texture element yeah. um i thought this was amazing it was a stunner i was shocked by how good it was to start off the meal yes i agree it it truly started and you're like oh man if that can transform <laughs> if that can transform to this what's next Right. If you're enjoying this video and you want to see more Las Vegas restaurant reviews, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We have over 120 restaurant reviews in Las Vegas alone. All right. The second course was Les Samon de Ecosse. I don't speak French. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, Scottish. Thankfully, there are English subtitles to this menu. Scottish salmon confit coated with Ocetra caviar and citrus coulis. Man, they had a grapefruit coulis on this that mm -hmm. paired so nicely with the salmon. Yeah, it so was, it, you'll again, be seeing like these little mouth. dots of yeah. different citrus coulis, which they were the most intense flavors in tiny little bits. Very tiny little spots, yeah. But for me, and if you've been watching the channel, I pretty much never order salmon. I'm not a huge fan of it. Mm -hmm. This might have been my favorite dish of the night. Um, yeah. It was shocking. The salmon, I remember, because I, I, I didn't fully hear that it was a confit, so I actually, it looks raw. Yeah. And, we, we actually <laughs> talked about it multiple times while we were eating yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we talked to the, um, to the waiter afterwards, and we're like, how is that prepared? Because it doesn't make sense. It melted in my mouth, and I was like, a raw piece of salmon should not be that soft, that tender, that just melt, melt away. away and they too. said they talked about how it is cooked at such a low temperature um and it is done sous vide he said sous vide and confit style yeah um so it is like i don't know it's so delicate but i thought it was my favorite it is the standout dish for me yeah it's it was of many standout dishes i was like there was 10 standout yeah. dishes yeah. yeah no that was delicious yeah it appeared raw, like looking at it. You would have mm -hmm. guessed it to be a sashimi type bite. Right. I, I was like, geez, so this good. is a big old chunk of yeah. raw salmon. This is weird. Um, but no, it was perfect. Course three, you want to try this one? Uh, sure. First, I will also say that everything is served literally on a silver platter. Yes. Like they bring everything out on a silver platter. They take the dirty dishes back on a silver platter. If I haven't already mentioned it, 
this was like the only Michelin three-star restaurant in Las Vegas back when Michelin Guide was here. Yeah. And holy crap, it stands up. It stands up. up. Um, I, I have done a couple three-star Michelin restaurants in New York City. I felt like this was right there with all That's of them. That's awesome. You know, it was amazing. Those guys were spot on with everything. And no matter who was around when we were asking questions, they all knew the all the answers. Mm -hmm. The next one is La Pomme de Terre. It's shaved truffles and potatoes with olive oil topped with carpaccio of foie gras and shaved um, avocado. One of the bites, or two of the bites were the foie gras, mm -hmm. how we pronounce it, and then the other had avocado on it. And I will tell you what, you needed it to to cut to cut in there, but that potato, I don't, I don't know if you got a raw potato and it was just that good. I don't know if it was like <laughs> I a can't cooked imagine. potato that was like, but it had still some of that crisp to it is why I'm saying like. Well, the, it was cooked, right? Wasn't it? I don't know. <laughs> it was a cold dish. It was like a chilled dish as well. So it was very interesting on how that presentation hit, but I got hints of chive in that. Yeah, so the, the potato is, it's Very soft, thin. it's thin, it's cold, but it's tender. So obviously it has to be cooked in some way. We don't know how. Yeah. Um, such an odd pairing of ingredients that pair so well. Like, you look at it, I don't understand it, and I said to the waiter, do I just eat like one at a time of these three piles? And he said, yeah, if you can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I thought that I don't know how a potato can melt in your mouth. Like right. That was right. the piece to me. Especially that when it's cold. Mm -hmm. um, it just didn't seem like it would, but it, it worked so well. Yes. Um, yeah, very good. Also, there was like a slight bread crisp on there. And I was like, man, if rye crisp were like this all the time, I'd eat them <laughs> constantly. Yeah, it was good. All right, let's. We got more to go here. We got seven more courses. <laughs> Next is La Truffle Noir. Uh, crispy truffle tart with onion confit and smoked bacon. Onion was the star of this dish. Yeah. It was really like, good. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember the moment after I took my first bite, I was like, this is an onion dish. This Didn't is it have all about a, the onion. Um, sunny side up quail uh, egg. Quail egg, yeah. yeah. Which it was like perfectly done. You could even see I I end up like flipping it over, and there's mm -hmm. just your perfect white. Yep. And I don't know. I I think that the bottom layer is like a crispy onion of some sort. Yeah. But here it says crispy truffle tart. Maybe that's there was, what it was. truffle on top too. <laughs> it's hard to say what it I was. I don't know. But I thought onions were the star, mm -hmm. which. I don't eat a ton of onions. No. But it was the star. It was delicious. It was light. Worth it. Worth it. All right. Next, uh, we had a trio of oh, shellfish, yeah. which less crustaceous, I assume is how you pronounce that. Sure. Um, so we had a lobster, main lobster, uh, shrimp sphere, and then seared cuttlefish. Mm-hmm. And they were all on top of a lobster bisque. Yeah. The saffron last lobster bisque, is that what it was called? I thought he said saffron, but um, the menu says spicy bisque. Um, but mm -hmm. it it was a lobster bisque is what we were told. The lobster bisque itself was very creamy, rich, beautiful. Beautiful. Go, went well with all of them. Yeah. Um, the cuttlefish was something I have not had much of before. I don't know if I've ever had it before. And you can see, hopefully, in the pictures, the ridges. the ridges on it. It has a, in my mind, it had a bite, like, similar to al dente pasta. But then you could feel the but ridges like in your mouth. It's like, but pasta that's, like, still paired together. Yeah, it was the weirdest yeah. texture, but it worked. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. an interesting bite. Um, it wasn't my favorite bite. I did not like it. It was just weird. It was just weird. Um, <laughs> but the shrimp... I thought what was crazy about that is so it's almost like just a bunch of ground up shrimp into like a shrimp, shrimp ball, ball. Mm -hmm. um, but then you've got these thin shiver or thin slivers of carrots that are still the crispest carrots right. I've ever tasted. And they're tasted. so small and they they look like they're cooked. Yeah. Um, but they added just 
the right amount of texture to it. Yeah. And then you had a two bite piece of lobster that was perfect, went perfectly with the soup. Yeah, I can't. Oh. What shocked me, I think, about that is you think it's all on top of lobster bisque, so it's all going to end up having a similar flavor. No. Nope. Not no. at all. Very different <laughs> in the best way. Yep. Oof. All right. Le foie gras. This one was funky. So it's foie gras. Ugh. Saying that word is hard. It is. Foie gras royale with a chicken consomme chowan mushi. Basically, he told us it's like a foie flan. Yeah. When I will tell you, <laughs> I smelled it because it had the most aromatic smell to it. And it smelled to me like the perfect chicken noodle soup, homemade chicken noodle soup or mm -hmm. homemade chicken noodle or chicken broth. Yes. It smelled so good. And it also had some leeks on there mm -hmm. as well. And then black pepper. And I went to put my... Yeah, we thought it was going to be like a... I just soup. thought it was going to be a... I honestly told Josh, I think this is going to be the palate cleanser between some courses. Mm -hmm. And I put my spoon in and I was like, wait, what? This is not it. And it truly was a flan. Yeah, I... Th it was I, so good. <laughs> I first thought, like, if you've ever um, had, like, silken tofu, like, yep. the most silk tofu, it just cut like that. Yeah. Um, it was freaking amazing. The leeks provided this texture, the yes. um, scallions and the pepper in there just all married well together. And I know Josh said his earlier was the salmon. This was the dish for me that was mind blowing. Like mm -hmm. I can't, I still can't get over it. I cannot believe how good that was. So good. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Um, Le foie gras. That was nope. the one we just had. I mm -hmm. just want to say it one more time because <laughs> I don't get to the rest of the time. All right, lay black cod. Oh. Caramelized okay. black cod in Malabar pepper sauce with honey nut and black garlic. Delish. It is so good. Yes. Um, it, so it was like a miso black mm -hmm. cod is what they had told us. Yep. Uh, the miso, it was, it was strong but not overpowering. Every, oh. Everything on this plate was strong but not overpowering. Like, you could still sense everything different. There was a sweet potato that, if that's what baby food is like, <laughs> baby we should, should be eating baby food. Say, we, that should be we what should baby be eating food baby is like. food. <laughs> what amazes me, and you can see that these dishes aren't large scale dishes, but there was your entire meal on a dish. I remember like, you saying that. It was yeah. weird. It had this, um, the black cod, it had the potato puree <laughs> yeah <laughs> that piece on it and then it had this sauce this black peppercorn sauce mm -hmm. oh i i'm so telling one you, crazy thing on this so too good. was like well i think it was the only thing i didn't eat there was this little top of a mushroom which she got two of mm -hmm. but it was uh, sitting on top of like one of those oh. tiny like um, a pearl onion like a pearl onion mm -hmm. And we just cut the onion in half and ate it. And it was not a pearl onion that just came. It was kind of grilled, I would say. It, it was cooked in some manner. Yeah, and it, it popped in your mouth. It had yeah. the most flavor ever. Yeah, so like I ended by eating like my cod with the onion. Mm -hmm. Heck, actually, I, I mixed it all up. It was like old school microwave dinner style <laughs> where you throw it all in the mashed potatoes. Oh, yeah, because... At this point, we got mashed potatoes as well. <laughs> oh, no, that's the next course. Oh, okay, okay. Surprise, getting gone. Them, getting mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next course. La canette. La canette. Uh, spit roasted duck with a cow. Yeah, how do you say that one? Yep. A C A C I A. <laughs> Acacia? Honey. Acacia, honey? Maybe. Um, coriander and braised endive. And the braised endive was with an orange glaze. <clears throat> well, and so, and there was mashed potatoes. Oh, yeah. Which, um, Robochon is known. Holy crap, did you notice? I didn't even notice. They put my name on this menu. Oh. And there's two of them. All right, well, that's cool. Anyway, uh, yeah, so 
world famous for like oh, and the, the day we ate there. Yeah. Huh. World famous for like the greatest mashed potatoes in the world. Because and they're made out of pure butter, I swear. Well, I mean, probably. <laughs> they smell like pure butter. Yes. They, do, they taste like potatoes mixed with pure butter. 80% butter. <laughs> um, yeah, they were delicious. And there was also, uh, I can't remember what he called it, but it was like a, a I duck it, kebab. Yeah, it was like a duck, a duck meatball. meatball. Duck lollipop. Um, which was smoked. <laughs> Yeah. And they presented to us. Um, it was good. It didn't really... I didn't need it. I didn't either. Mm -mm. I, didn't, I I enjoyed it, but I did not need it with that course. So yeah. it was kind of interesting. I don't know if there was something else going on. And they're like, got a couple of kebabs. Go give them to those kids. They're eating everything. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you about the duck. It had yes. this crispy skin on it that tasted like um, a candied pepper. So it had the crunch and the like little bit of spice from pepper, the black not, pepper. Yeah. yeah. And that paired with the endive with the orange sauce. Yeah, the endive I mean, was it, super sweet. Yeah, it was with the so sauce. good. The entire course on that one, again, it all just fits so well together. And and it felt like perfection, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like even though I'm not saying that that was my favorite dish. It, it was perfect. It felt great. Um, and it was after that course where I said to Rachel, you know, when we were at L'Atelier or mm -hmm. um, the next door restaurant, I was like, I was shocked at calling that my favorite meal ever without having beef. Yeah. I'm just so used to having beef as like one of my Main favorite, um, favorite best meals and stuff. Um, but no beef here. No beef needed. Duck, and, duck did great. Yeah. I think the other very exciting part about all of it was I thought you would probably need a palate cleanser between each one because each course was so powerful in its flavors. But by the time you were done with that course and they brought you the next one, you were ready for yeah. it. It was so It weird. was great timing, great <laughs> yeah. transitions. Yeah, I thought it was awesome. All right. All right. Speaking that's speaking of palate like, cleanser. That was the end of our savory dishes. Yes. <laughs> now into the sweets. And boy, howdy. Yeah. <laughs> Le hibiscus. Oh, this was good. Uh, green apple sorbet, limoncello granita with hibiscus syrup. So the limoncello granita is at the bottom. It's like a shaved ice mm -hmm. limoncello flavor. On top of it, you actually, between the green apple sorbet and the limoncello um, were these three tiny strands of green apple. And they were the coldest thing in my life. I've never tasted something so cold. Holy <laughs> cow. Um, we were saying like that must be what it is when they, what do they freeze The liquid with? nitrogen yes. freezing or something? Uh, mm -hmm. It has to be something like that because it was like you bite cold. into it, it's like brain freeze instantly almost. Yeah. Um, but I love the green apple sorbet. I thought that that was very good. It was very tart. And then you got this hibiscus syrup that comes in and adds some sweetness to it. Yeah, it really was the palate cleanser because it, I mean, there were the first bite I took and I was like, between it, it was so cold mm -hmm. and how tart it was, I was like, oh my, here we go. Yeah, there was right. also this cute little meringue stick. Yeah. Looked kind of like a candy cigarette. Mm -hmm. It was so tasty in there. It was good. <laughs> yeah, it, and it actually, it was super tender and it just melt. But like in your sorbet, it didn't melt. Mm -mm. So it would like provide that texture of the little tiny bit of crunch. Yeah. But I don't know. It didn't, mind blowing. Again, I don't know how it works. It doesn't make sense. No. But it just worked. <laughs> and then we had the dessert was called La Chocolat, and it was a cherry mousse with chocolate cream and Kirsch Chantilly, like a black forest. It looked like a little perfect little mushroom. Yes. On chocolate rice um, cereal. Is that what it was? Or something yeah. Like that? I mean, it's any like Rice Krispies or anything, no. though. And then these cherries covered in ground pistachios, but the little mushroom thing was like the best truffle ever with this mousse in it. <laughs> it was like you're you're thinking like a Lindor truffle. Yes, like yes. one of those. 
Mm. It's it's like that, but with a third to a tenth of the shell. Yeah. And the inside is that much creamier. Yeah. Yeah. It was freaking <laughs> amazing. So good. Um, I'm not a giant chocolate person, but I couldn't care less when I was eating <laughs> that thing. We loved that. that yes, was really good. and it it's not overly sweet. Mm -mm. Um, you would think listening to these the description and stuff that it would be, but I did not think that it was overly sweet. It it was a fantastic dessert. Yes. And then if you think the <laughs> bread cart is amazing, yes, just wait. There is a dessert cart <laughs> that it's... they push around past your table all night long, <laughs> and you tempting think, you. Why don't I get any of that mm -hmm. stuff yet? Well, we ended up eating about 15 different... Is that what it was? What are they called? No, I think we were closer to 17 because of the... I mean, that's only two more. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but we had that creme brulee thing in the... There'll be pictures to we tell so us who's true dessert. or not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, so there, there are two dishes that they actually have to go make in the back in the kitchen, which is a creme brulee and a panna cotta. Yeah. Um, both of them are great, but there's all these tiny little perfect <laughs> desserts, chocolates. And again, um, I don't know what you call them all. Our waiter says, okay, or the dessert guy. One of the waiters says, which ones do you want? And I'm like, oh. Yeah, we, and then he's we like, said you should try them. this one, you should try this one, you should try this one. Yeah, he kind of seemed like he didn't want to do all of them, um, but then... We ended, we ended up, up with, with most of them. <laughs> almost every single one of them. Cause and like, then, yeah, as he's describing them, they are, yeah. I can't remember 20 items at a time. No. And then at the very end, our waiter's like, do you want the dessert cart to come back around? What? <laughs> we didn't. We didn't have it come back around, guys. No, but it was crazy oh, so awesome. Good. Loved it. Um, and then as a parting gift, it is... A marble pound cake. Covered in chocolate, topped with hazelnuts. Yes. So it's breakfast so tomorrow. So if, if I, when we open this up, I'll try to record a little bit of it to show <laughs> what it looks like. But it's a giant loaf. We actually watched somebody else who came and ended up getting sent home with banana, banana bread. Banana bread. Would have loved that. If if we would have gotten banana bread, we definitely would have asked for some butter from there. Like, get, go give me a slab of that butter. Yes. Um, all right, all in all, this was by far the most expensive meal of my life. Mm -hmm. And I don't regret it. No, and I would actually say it's the best meal of my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This, um, we, were, worth it. we were going into it saying this thing better be because we knew how expensive it was. Yeah. Uh, this is definitely probably almost double the most expensive meal. Yeah, because I think the most expensive one was last summer. Yeah. Um, but I absolutely loved it. I can't think of anything that I would have changed other than maybe I should have gone with Chardonnay instead of Riesling, but we, we really like Riesling. So yeah. I know there's going to be some wine haters out there and stuff, but, um, I loved it. I, I thought it was an amazing experience. I recommend somebody try to do it. If you can do it, I can understand if you can't. Mm -hmm. And if you can't go to the next door restaurant, yeah. L'Atelier, um, sit at the bar watch them cook and prepare your food it's it's amazing but if you can swing it the other head next door th yeah the other thing i want to say about this meal is don't plan anything else around it no don't brush yourself with having a show before or after just make this your evening of an experience it took us two and a half hours P probably right about two and a mm -hmm. half hours yeah and it didn't feel rushed. They don't make you feel rushed. And give it the time it deserves. Attention. This, yeah, well. and the attention. This meal deserves your undivided attention. What? We, we were taking notes the whole time. We were taking our pictures, and they were fine with all of that. But to in totally enjoy these flavors, it deserves your entire attention. I agree. It was that good. If you're enjoying our videos, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. You can also follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All our links are down below. Thank you.